everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a reaction to Bill Maher. Um, it's the first time I've done one of his. So let's check it out. And finally, new rule. If you're part of today's woke revolution, you need to study the part of revolutions where they spin out of control because the revolutionaries get so drunk on their own purifying elixir they imagine they can reinvent the very nature of human beings. <clears throat> communists, communists thought selfishness, selfishness could be cast out of human nature. Russian revolutionaries spoke of the new Soviet man who wasn't motivated by self-interest, but instead wanted to be part of a collective. No, it turns out he wanted to be on a yacht in a Gucci tracksuit holding a vodka and a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> not standing in line all day for a potato. The problem with communism and with some very recent ideologies here at home is that they think you can change reality by screaming at it, that you can bend human nature by holding your breath, but that's the difference between reality and your mommy. <laughs> Lincoln once said that you can repeal all past history, but you still cannot repeal human nature. But he's canceled now, so fuck him. <laughs> Yesterday I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you have? Because, again, in China, we saw how a revolutionary thought he could do a page one rewrite of humans. Mao ordered his citizens to throw off the four olds, old thinking, old culture, old customs, and old habits. So um, your whole life went in the garbage overnight, no biggie. And those who resisted were attacked by an army of purifiers called the Red Guard who went around the country putting dunce caps on people, yeah, who didn't take to being a new kind of mortal being. A lot of pointing and shaming went on, oh, and about a million dead, and the only way to survive was to plead insanity for the crime of being insufficiently radical, then apologize and thank the state for the chance to see what a piece of shit you are, and of course submit to re-education, or as we call it here in America, freshman orientation. <laughs> Listen to this story. There's a law professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago, named Jason Kilborn, whose crime was that on one of his exams, he used a hypothetical case where a black female worker sued her employer for race and gender discrimination, alleging that managers had called her two slur words, the type of real-world case these students might one day confront. And knowing the extreme sensitivity of today's students, he didn't write the two taboo words on the test, just the first letter of each. He was teaching his students how to fight racism in the place where it matters most, the criminal justice system. But because he merely alluded to those words, again, in the service of a good cause, he was banned from campus, placed on indefinite leave, and made to wear the dunce cap. No, not really the dunce cap part, but, but our American version of that. Eight weeks of sensitivity training, weekly 90-minute sessions with a diversity trainer, and having to write five self-reflection papers. A grown-ass man, a liberal law professor. If you can't see the similarities between that and this, the person who need, needs re-education is you. He's telling the truth, people. He's telling the truth. Yes, we, we do have our own Red Guard here, but they do their rampaging on Twitter. Here's a cute example from a couple of years ago. The banjo player <laughs> from Mumford & Sons tweeted that he liked a book, a book that apparently had not been approved by the revolution. So, of course, he had to delete the tweet, then take time away from the band, 
oh my God, you mean this could have affected Mumford and Sons? <laughs> and then the cringing apology, I have come to better understand the pain caused by the book I endorsed. Pain? From a book? Unless he hit the drummer over the head with it. <laughs> what happened to I can read whatever the fuck I want? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm a musician. It won't happen again. There was once a very different musician named John Lennon who wrote a song called Revolution. And people who didn't really listen to it thought it was a rah-rah call for revolution. No, it was the opposite. The lyrics are, you say you want a revolution? Well, you know, we all want to change the world. But if you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao, you ain't going to make it with anybody anyhow. There's a guy who understood how mm -hmm. good intentions can turn into the insane arrogance of thinking your revolution is so fucking awesome and your generation is so mind-bendingly improved that you have bequeathed the world with a new kind of human. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> with communists, that human was no longer selfish. In America today, that human is no longer born male or female. <laughs> and obesity is not something that affects health. You can be healthy at any size. Really, we voted on it. <laughs> a formerly serious magazine last year published with a straight face an article called Separating Sports by Sex Doesn't Make Sense. Yes, it does. Because, again, we haven't reinvented Homo sapiens since Crystal Pepsi came out. <laughs> I've spent three decades on TV mocking Republicans who said climate change was just a theory. And now I've got to deal with people who say, you know what else is just a theory? Biology. <laughs> That's true. I don't always agree with uh, Bill Maher, but... For the most part, he's got it right. He definitely got it right on this thing, I think. It's just too bad I didn't see the rest of it. You know, they didn't show the rest of it. But it's, a, as the old saying goes, penny for your thoughts, people. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you are ones that are politically center, shall we say, center, maybe center right, or even even center left. But as long as you're still in the center, I think you guys, you guys would get a laugh about this. And if you're on the extremes, I wish you all the best. I'll be polite. I'll just say I wish you guys the best. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoy this and you guys got a good laugh with the jokes, but also with the point that he's trying to make. See the connection. Yes. All right, you guys take care of yourselves and what you love. Bye-bye.